UFP, the United Federation of Podcasts. Good morning. I'm Jason Zalagi. And I'm Chrissy DeClerc Zalagi with today's Caffeinated History with the Zalagis on the United Federation of Podcast Network. Before we jump into our topic for today, we'd like to take a moment to thank our United Federation of Podcasts associate producers, Justin Hoser and David Willett. Without the UFP, we wouldn't be able to bring you this podcast. Listeners, we'd love to add your name to this list, and we can do that with your Patreon subscription to the United Federation of Podcasts of just $10 monthly. Also, don't forget about the Boldly Go Project. Celebrate Gene Roddenberry's centennial by sharing what gives you hope for the next century. Go to boldlygo100.org or use the hashtag boldlygo100 to show what makes you optimistic about the future. Today's topic is the 1914 Christmas Truce. World War I was a conflict that spanned the world and brought death and destruction across the globe. The Christmas of 1914 the first of the Great War witnessed one of the most short-lived and tragically beautiful unofficial truces that took place during those four painful years. The events that took place during this brief lull in fighting were quickly forbidden by the commanders on both sides of the trenches for fear of damaging morale. The first months of World War I witnessed the Imperial German Army penetrate deep into northern France and most of Belgium. Despite the initial successes of the invasion in August and September, the Germans were exhausted by November 1914 and faced increasingly bitter French, British, and Belgian resistance. The front line stabilized into what would eventually be known as the Western Front, a continuous series of trenches and fortifications that stretched from the Swiss Alps to the English Channel. At the outbreak of hostilities in 1914, both the Central Powers and the Entente had expected the Great War to be over by Christmas. They were entirely over-optimistic over the length and expense of the war. The gigantic network of pillboxes, reinforced trenches, and fortifications for which the Western Front was known had not been completed by December 1914. Instead, hastily created dugouts and trenches sheltered the enemy combatants. A deadly no-man's land existed between the opposing lines, where thousands of German and top soldiers were killed or wounded. Machine gun nests and artillery barrages made no-man's land a killing ground where the dead and wounded had to be left until there was a chance to retrieve them under the cover of darkness. New technology and weapons had outstripped the tactics of the previous century and made the Western Front a nightmare for those condemned to fight within its bounds. As Christmas Eve approached, an unauthorized truce was initiated by the soldiers sheltering in the trenches. Not every region of the Western Front observed this Christmas truce, but where they did, the opposing forces were brought together. Groups of soldiers crossed over no man's land to exchange greetings, gifts, and food. Ostensible enemies came together to sing Christmas carols. The exchange of prisoners, the recovery of the wounded and dead, were also conducted without fear of attack. This phenomenal truce continued into Christmas Day. Christmas Day also witnessed an impromptu football or soccer match taking place between British and German troops in no man's land. According to British sources, the game went to their soldiers in a 3-2 victory. There are reports of as many as 29 such games played along the Western Front. As darkness fell on Christmas Day, the opposing forces slipped back into their trenches to resume killing each other the next day. Rumors of this fraternization reached in taunt and central power commanders, who viewed these events with dour pessimism. The soldiers were there to fight, not exchange small talk and gifts. Such activities could undermine morale of both sides, as individuals remembered their enemy's humanity. Orders passed down the line condemning the Christmas truce. The severe casualties both sides suffered in 1914, 1916, and 1917 destroyed any large-scale repeats of the 1914 Christmas truce. Thanks for listening. We'd also like to thank our History with the Salagi Patreon patrons, Ed Shinevere, Laura Dull, Chris Hill, and Susan Capuzzi de Clerc. Their contributions help us to have the time to research and write what you're hearing. And thank you to the creators and executive producers of the UFP Network, Ken Tripp, Tony Robinson, Brandon Shamatella, and Zach Moore. And another thanks to Tony Robinson for the awesome show art and Zach Tripp for the wonderful closing music. Please subscribe in your favorite podcast app and rate and review us as well. While you're there, check out the other shows UFP has to offer. We'd love to hear what you think. If you want to reach out, you can find the network on Twitter at UFP Earth, and this podcast in particular at Salagi History. That's at S-Z-I-L-A-G-Y-I History. You can also talk about any and all of the UFP podcasts in our Facebook group called the Federation Council Chambers. 
And last but not least, you can find me on Twitter at Jason Dark Elf. And me at the Goddess Livia. That's T H E G O D D E S S L I V I A. We'd also love some topic suggestions. What would you like to learn on caffeinated history? This has been a production of MTMR Media Works.